Okay, how is it going? So welcome to another episode of the Leo Alves podcast. We are closing in on 150 episodes, but today we have, uh, it's about episode 140, maybe give or take an episode. I've got my good mate, Brendan Kavina on again for another episode. This is like the third or fourth now. Um, yeah. You might know him as the person who really loves eggs on Twitter nowadays, <laughs> maybe not at the time, yeah. I think when we done the first two episodes, but nowadays yeah. I've definitely gotten that <laughs> reputation. And uh, yeah. assuming you've listened to the, our previous episodes together, maybe I'll just say like, maybe introduce yourself briefly, just so we won't say as much as the previous two times, and then we'll just kind of go from there. Yeah, so um, good one actually, because what am I now? So people actually know me by my name, which is Brenda Corbino. I am known as... Someone who looked like John Cena, the wrestler, but a black version. That's one. The other thing that I'm known as is for being a fitness influencer who loves eggs. And yeah, I'm just an I'm just I'm just a guy who trains people, likes eggs, looks like John Cena. That's really it. In my regard. That's a, a good way to pretty much summarize it. So in today's podcast episode i thought you know the other two times i think we had a few topics in mind and we had like some general chit chat which was uh, which was enjoyable but in today's mm. podcast episode i thought we'd do something quite different uh, considering i know you're very active on twitter i thought mm. you know I'd get up a, a few tweets that you'd made and then we could like just kind of just talk about them in a bit more depth none of them more like yeah you know, the, the crazier ones that I, I <laughs> seen there, but um, just more that I feel like, you know, more related to a, um, the main purpose of this podcast, which is like more fitness yeah. and nutrition advice. And ones yeah. that I was like, oh, you know what? That would be good to, to speak about in a bit more depth, especially um, just, yeah, for the listeners. So number one, um, and I thought I'd start off with just one that I retweeted. I think it was literally yesterday where you said too many people focus on going really low with RDLs, so Romanian deadlifts. Uh, the mm. second it goes below the knees, holding a dumbbell or barbell becomes more of a lower back movement. My general mm. rule is to just go below the knees. If you feel the full stretch on your hamstrings, then it's enough. Uh, what made you mm. want to tweet that? So uh, you know how there's always a uh, influence on Instagram is in particular, not really that much on TikTok, but there's always an influencer on Instagram who has found a new way to activate the muscles, right? Yeah. Uh, with RDLs, there's one that I saw not too long ago where the person got, I think they stood on the bumper weight plate, one or two bumper weight plates. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> don't even make a difference. <laughs> and they're like, oh, if you want to activate your your glutes will do this. I was just like, you're not even training your hamstrings at that rate. What, what are you talking about? It's just, it's just like people, they focus because I have a lot of people. I like to call myself a master of the hinge movement, right? People always ask me with RDLs, how low should I go? How low should I go? And I always ask them the question, when do you feel in your hamstrings? And then, oh, I feel it around when it comes to like just around my knee area. But I thought you should go a lot lower than that. I ask them, why? They can't give me a proper answer, right? And I'm like, do you feel it in your lower back when you go really low? Because they're like, yeah, I have issues where I feel it in my lower back and so on and so forth. And because I've been asked this this question so many times and I've seen those uh, that video or videos of people doing the RDLs or whatever with a bumper plate on it, on their foot, I just had to say to myself, I'm going to make this tweet because way too many people are misinformed in regards to this and they're just using their lower back more and then they always say oh i used to do rdls but my lower back is is cooked because of it so yeah yeah and uh, it's funny you mentioned that thing with the bumper plate beneath the feet because i think mm. the first time i ever saw that was back in 2019 when i was working in, mm. a, uh, mm. in fulham and i remember seeing it and just thinking what is the whole point of that because i was looking yeah. at the person doing the exercise and it was with a personal trainer and it it wasn't making a difference like they were still going to the same depth with the rdl so I, I was like okay that's pointless and you know i looked it up online and they said it's just because you can basically have more of a range of motion when you're doing well that was a thought process behind it like you it will give you more of a range of motion because you're higher off the ground but then that doesn't make sense because 
then it would just go into your lower back if you're going that low. Like, you don't need to go that low. So I just thought, yeah, man, that's just so well said. And it's a common yeah. mistake I see as well. Just people just go way too low with the RDL. Mm. Like, hey, you don't need to go all the way down. Like, yeah. Yeah. Mm. There you go. So was there anything else you wanted to, to add to that before I bring up the next one? A lot of people, right? So when I first got taught how to do RDLs myself, I think it was so complicated. I don't even know why, but it was so complicated teaching. Or not be not teaching in terms of me teaching it, but when I got taught, I was like, you have to do this and, and what and this and what? Nowadays, I just tell people, an RDL, here's the thing. Envision this. Make your knees soft. How do I do that? If you make your knees soft, have a slight bend of them. They're soft. They're not like, you know, when you do a squat, your knees are like hard, they're stable, so and so forth. Make your knees soft, right? Cool, soft knees. Have a curve in the lumbar spine. What's the lumbar spine? Your lower back. Okay. Keep your back straight throughout the thing. Okay. Push your butt back as you do that. Ah. Oh. I feel the stretch now. Yeah. That's how I do it. Oh, yeah. oh, oh, oh. Like, okay. Like, it's, for me, it's easy to teach because I've seen so many people do it wrong. I've done it wrong myself. But once I kind of just tell people, keep your knees soft, keep your back, uh, your lower back arched, keep your back straight in general and focus on pushing the butt back whilst keeping your knees soft. They see the movement happen and they're like, I feel the stretch and the lower and the, uh, in my hamstrings, or I like to say as simply as possible, the back of the legs, because some people don't know what hamstrings are. And there you go. And you're laughing from then. And I just feel like RDLs can be simple, but people, A, tend to com overcomplicate it, and B, people tend to find think they found new ways to activate the uh, glutes or the hamstrings more when they haven't. And I just think people just need to, when it comes to the gym, I like to say it is science, not rocket science. A lot of people try to do way too much of it. Mm. But that's that. That's what I have, all I have to say in regards to that one. Yeah, I heard a, a quote the other day. It's funny you say that because I heard a, a quote the other day on a podcast I like to listen to for personal trainers. Mm. And uh, like they they know 100% what they're speaking about. But they said uh, one thing was like being 100% science-based in uh, 2024 is the new skinny fat. And I thought that was just... <laughs> <laughs> I just thought that was... Uh, <laughs> quite funny like, because yeah it's a science but it, a lot of people do like to overcomplicate it as well yeah. um yeah so next tweet i had up is uh mm -hmm. just a reminder that you can absorb around 90 percent of protein from cooked eggs as opposed to the 50 52 percent from raw eggs what made you want to tweet that one remind me again so i think the conversation was more or less like someone was just um I, I think it was a study you had up because you it was went around the time you were discussing that you can uh, absorb more protein from cooked eggs than raw eggs because I think someone was trying to pull you up. Oh, the, 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 the 90 percent uh, bioavailability or absorption, sorry, the 90 percent absorption rate with cooked eggs versus the 50 percent with raw eggs, right? Yeah. And I think just someone yeah. was trying to tell you that. Why do you do that? because raw you, you don't like raw eggs aren't as good of a protein source so so for what i've read so i've actually been studying this a lot more recently right and it's come to the conclusion that I, I will source study to you after this podcast but essentially raw eggs and cooked eggs in the sense of muscle protein synthesis is actually a lot more similar than you think it is there's no significant difference as opposed to just the uh absorption rate in general right so what I always do when it comes to eggs, because for me, I eat a lot in general, right? I eat a lot and I'm always on the move. So how can I eat a lot, be on the move and do it consistently, right? And I just say to people, listen, like I have raw eggs because it's convenient. The first, when I, I'm different, right? Some people, they like to wake up in the morning, cook their breakfast, spend like, 20, 30 minutes in the kitchen, blah, blah, blah. For me, when I wake up, I wake up to do the stuff that I have to do. Brush my teeth, have my eggs, go to the gym, go to work. Straight, straight, bam, 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 bam. And the thing is, people tell me, oh, cook eggs, you know, if you scramble your eggs, it only takes like five minutes to cook them. I say, of course. But then it takes me 15 minutes to eat them because I'm eating so much. 
having 10 eggs is a lot. That's the thing. I have him raw. People, the only thing I am worried about, or I, the only small concern I have is in regards to Salmonella. That is it. I like to take risks, Leo. I like to take risks, right? If I get Salmonella, touch wood, I don't, I'll be okay. But without sounding ignorant, right? My whole point to people is that I do things because I, I do it for convenience, mm. right? I do it straight for convenience. I don't do it. I don't like to overthink too much when it comes to science-based stuff with nutrition or with fitness or with the gym in general. I just like to say, this is that. This is what I've seen. This is why I do it. And go on from there. Because whenever I research studies, you know me, I'm a nerd. I always research uh, meta-analysis. Whenever I do it, I take my time. I see every single point. I then go on from there and continue. But I always say to people, this is what has been said. I don't say this is the absolute right decision to do and so on and so forth. Because people will come, come to me and say, actually, they prefer to have cooked eggs or they prefer to scrum their eggs. Do it then. Don't have raw eggs because of me. I have raw eggs because I do it for my uh, convenience. I'm not out here telling people, you need to go and have raw eggs to get big. That's just stupid. That's such a, it's a, that's such a like clickbait TikTok sort of thing to do. If you have raw eggs, you will get big like me. Okay, sure. Mm. Yeah, it's like you yeah, said. Fair. You're. I think you've said it several times on Twitter where you're aware that cooking it is probably going to be better from like a protein sort of aspect. Or yeah, just, yeah, from like absorption sort of aspect, but. You're not fussed about that. You're doing it more for, more so for convenience. You wouldn't really be able yeah. to, to keep up with the cooking method. It wouldn't really fit in your schedule as well. So, yeah, it makes complete mm -hmm. sense. And, um, yeah, people are probably just pulling it, you up on it time to time just because they've probably never seen you say that and then just mm -hmm. have to say it again. Uh, but, yeah, that makes complete sense. It was, um, I don't even feel like I have anything to add to that apart from what you've already said. Um, mm -hmm. Which, But you know what? You Like, I don't... Cracking that many eggs, it must take you like 20, 30 minutes as well. But no, like, how many eggs is it? You usually raw eggs do you have? Uh, six absolute minimum, absolute minimum six, on average eight to 10. And on a bit on a day where I'm having a bit more, 12 to 15. Okay. Those are large ones. So that's the equivalent to like, I will say for a large egg, you're also adding another one or half an extra, an extra half egg. So it's a lot. Yeah, man. Yeah, but um, obviously works for you. So uh, did you want to add anything else until I go on to the next point? Honestly, all I can say to people when it comes to stuff like that or my tweets, just like I told everyone else um, uh, when it comes to other influencers or whatever, I just say, listen, guys, Take everything people say on the internet with a pinch of salt and go about your day to see what works for you. I like to research on myself a lot. I haven't made any notes of it, of it but I research on myself a lot. So if I say something works for me, give it a go for yourself. If you feel like it doesn't suit you, then guess what? Try the other option. I'm not here to say the absolutes. I'm just here to say this is what I do. That's it. Mm. Okay, so... um. The next tweet I had up was, um, so a good amount of my female clients are women in my DMs, like wanting to know how to build bigger glutes whilst losing fat. Let me tell you mm. a few things. Do you make protein your best friend? Do you mm. become a hip hinge fiend and progressively mm. overload? Do you minimize or better to completely eliminate alcohol for better muscle protein synthesis? Do not forget mm. to prioritize protein. Do not forget, uh, get less than seven hours sleep and do not do hundreds of glute kickbacks thinking that's going to make a significant impact. Uh, yes. obviously I 100% agree as well. Uh, but what mm. made you tweet that? Again, a lot of female friends I have. Uh, so this comes from someone who has got, he's got a big bum, right? I have a big bum. Great news. I didn't really ask for one, but I made it happen. All right. Great. Genetics and working hard has got me to the stage. Cool. I have seen how it works for me, right? In terms of how my bum grew a lot bigger and how I've been stronger with it and so on and so forth over the years, right? And I've seen that with me. I have a lot of female friends and a lot of my female clients. A lot of their goals are to build big, uh, bigger glutes. 
But then one thing I've seen, again, this is more of an Instagram thing for like 2019, maybe 2018 sort of time where you'll have a girl who says, okay, a girl who's got good genetics and has worked hard, fair enough, who says, oh, to get big glutes, you have to do 100 squats in between this set and then do 500 glute kickbacks and this and that. And I just tell people, listen, the work, the exercises that activate the glute medius and the glute maximus, in my opinion, not even, not even my opinion, from research, actually, Romanian deadlifts, big, big friend, uh, fan of that, hip thrusts, Bulgarian split squats, all these sort of exercises that you see, high, uh, 45 degree hyper extensions that are glute focused, all these exercises you see have actually been studied and proven to help build glutes. So that's the exercises that helps with the glutes. But when it comes to you do all the exercises, that's great. You can do all the exercises, exercises in the world. But we progressively overload if you don't sleep enough. Don't know about that. We progressively overload if you don't get enough protein. Don't know about that. So if you're not having enough protein, it's not going to help. It's not going to help you uh, get any stronger and you won't get any bigger glutes. If you don't get enough sleep, we all know what bad sleep does to you in, in, in general. So you need to be ensuring that alongside of doing those exercises, you get better sleep, you get more protein. A lot of women that I know don't have enough protein. There's, for some reason, protein is scary. And I have no idea why, but you know, one of my good friends, I won't name her name, she's a vegetarian and she has lost a lot of weight, but she hasn't gone to the gym. So she's one of those girls that actually lost weight, but she wants more shape, do you understand? And I tell her what she has to do to, go to, uh, to, to get the shape because I, like without something like a creep I know genetics very very well and I look at her I'm like you have the potential to build what you want but you're gonna have to make protein your best friend and you're gonna have to do this and do that because if you don't it's just not gonna happen it's just not gonna happen so I really am a big fan of telling a lot of women hip hinge workouts protein and sleep will be your best friends when it comes to when it comes to building a big bum yeah, I think you uh, nailed it pretty well. Not to mention that, you know, in regard to sleep, being chronically sleep deprived, obviously, is not only going to make gym performance worse and, and progress even tougher, but it's just going to make life in general suck. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, you want to be making protein your best friend. I feel like it's so common for people just to be under consuming protein too. Uh, when I... Mm. Uh, and I find it kind of depends where in the world the person is based. I've realized that in Portugal, whenever I speak to people, typically people are actually doing really well on protein intake here on average, more mm. so. But I feel like mm. in England, I've noticed that yeah. Yeah, they're just like not eating enough on average. Um, mm. Hip hinges, yeah, amazing for the glutes. Obviously, progressive overload. You can't make progress without applying it. Um, alcohol, mm. I, alcohol, I feel yeah. like, I feel like, it's probably one of the biggest culprits to a lack of fitness progress that doesn't get, that just gets like too shoved to the side. And, yeah. um, and people want to yeah. worry so much about, um, you know, like these other just minuscule factors as to why they're not progressing. Whereas at the end of the day, it's probably more so to do with the fact that you're drinking most days of the week and not doing any, and, and you're continuing to do that. And, mm. uh, and, and you could be, you know, eating really well and sleeping great. Most, or oh, actually, you can't really sleep too great if you're drinking loads of alcohol. If you're drinking, you could yeah, be eating, exactly. eating really well and maybe getting your water in and doing all your exercise sessions. But if you're drinking nearly every single night, maybe more than a couple drinks a night, then progress is always no, going to be no tougher to come not. by. So you've just got to ask how important is it for you to really be drinking that much as well? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's and that's a big that's a big factor that I want to you know that's the point that I want. I don't I think. Alcohol is one of the most, in my opinion, is one of the most destructive components in regards to inhibiting or just, yeah, in regards to inhibiting gym progress. I think people really don't understand how bad it can be. So here's an example, right? Or here, here's what I've realized, right? A good amount of my male friends, eat, not necessarily similar to me, but let's say, the amount that I eat, they probably eat half of that, right? And if you were to eat half of what I eat, you're still going to get big, in my opinion, because I, I, I eat a, a monstrous amount of food <clears throat> or a monstrous amount of protein. So they eat similar or, yeah, let's say they eat similar to what I eat. 
And okay, genetics can count. And they go to the gym like four, five, six days a week. So they eat what eat similar to what I eat. They go to gym four, five, six times a week. But their physiques and their health isn't like mine at all. And not that a lot of them have, but you have me one or two say, oh, it's down to genetics and so on and so forth, right? Going to Chelsea games uh, these days, right, has made me realise how much people drink in this country. They drink a silly amount of alcohol. I'm talking, I think the most I've had in the past five, maybe five, four years, is three pints in the city. And that felt like absolute crap. I don't even drink these days. I don't need to. I don't need to. And the thing is, people drink so much, right? Those same friends drink so much that you are you think you look at them, and you're like, dude, you're eating similar to what I eat. You go to gym all the time, but you get like five hours of sleep a night. On top of that, you drink a steady amount of alcohol. You're not helping yourself at all. And this is they think, oh, but it's just one or two uh pints. I'm not like going on a heavy bender. And I tell people it's not the way it is. Think of it like getting a jab to the face in boxing. You get one jab to the face, okay, it, it stiffens you, it hurts, but it's not as hard as a hook or uppercut, right? But if you get two jabs, three, four, five, six, it counts up and up and up before you know it, you're knocked out. And I keep telling people, really, when it comes to alcohol, you really need to start seeing it as something that is bad. There's just no health benefits towards it. And it comes to fitness, alcohol, that's why beer but it exists. Because some people's alcohol, they have so much alcohol, their guts are out there, but their arms aren't that big. So it doesn't make any sense. How? How can that be? And I tell people, alcohol is not your friend. You need to start understanding that it's really inhibiting your progress in the gym and the fitness in general. Yeah, well said, man. Yeah, but alcohol just, honestly, it, it's not it. It's not it. And it, it definitely makes, I feel like many people who a lot of the time are struggling to make fitness progress, you know, this isn't everyone, but if the truth is, and you drink a lot, then it could be exactly. worth looking into whether or not it's serving you. And, you know, if, if it's something you want to overlook and you don't want to drink less, then it's probably because you more than anyone needs to actually start drinking less as well. Because, yeah. Because, you know, it's just, it gets, uh, yeah, I've seen absurd amounts and then in the same breath, they won't be, un they'll be unsure as to why they're not making progress. And I can assure you, maybe yeah. there are other factors going on, but alcohol will definitely be one of those uh, major ones. And it, was yeah. there anything else you wanted to add before I go on to the next point? A tweet nope. okay so yeah, this one was actually a really good one and you actually i think you posted it last year but mm. while i was scrolling i came across it again and i was like you know what this is still too real and i feel like it's only getting worse bodybuilding in the bodybuilding industry has grown a lot since 2019 tiktok has an algorithm that provides educational videos on gear cycling after seeing loads of young influencers on gear teenagers are impressionable i'm talking 16 year olds are now taking steroids it's nuts crazy yeah it's, what if you want to tweet that it's one of i think it's one of my biggest issues with fitness today it's forget about the tiktok kids you think they know it or whatever that's one that's one story in no universe should a 16 year old kid and i say kid because that's what they are should a 16 year old kid consider taking any sort of performance enhancing drugs to get a bit bigger in the gym it is ridiculous how many children are influenced by just taking whether it's just a little bit of testosterone or just a bit of steroids it's, i'm just gonna try it out dude what are you doing to yourself it is so pathetic and for me coming from somebody who gets accused of being on steroids here and there it's Obviously, I'm different in the sense where my genetics are different. I understand that wholeheartedly. But I have built this physique. I haven't even been lifting for a decade. I've been lifting for seven years and, a, and seven and a half years. I have built this physique. I feel great. I have nothing that I've added onto my body. I haven't done any uh, drugs, no steroids, no nothing. That's me. A lot of people that I see on my page don't want to have my exact physique. They want to have something that's similar or 
half the size of my physique. Something that's just a bit healthy. Yeah, those people are being influenced by taking steroids. And you see a lot of these guys on TikTok as well. And it's just ridiculous because it breaks my heart that a lot of these influencers out there still to this day lie about being natural in a generation where we are actually more open if you take steroids now. Do you understand? And there's a thing where we need to really speak on the impact of steroids and really start to understand, not understand, sorry, really start to warn people the pure, the pure destruction that steroids can cause towards your body. Because it's something that really shouldn't be played around as something light. It really affects your entire life. And that's what and that's what I'd say in regards to that. Because goodness me, I can go on for years about steroids, especially with kids. Yeah, and I I'm, I think I've seen you tweet this before, so I feel like um, you're about to agree with me on this one, but correct me if I, if you don't see it the same way, but I don't think either of us care if like an adult takes steroids. Like I, I don't give a damn if someone does or doesn't take steroids who's, you know, old enough to take yeah. it. But when it comes yeah. to like kids uh, yeah. being influenced, because the thing is, it's these powerful algorithms now that are only showing like the top 0.001% of physiques to their face continuously every single oh. day. Uh, just hours straight depending on how long they're on the app and some of these kids they're very addicted to uh, their social media apps i've seen like my brother is 13 years old i've seen his screen time i've seen the screen time of his friends and it's like it's it's mad it's mad so to they're on the app for that long and then if they you know like i the thing is even just speaking about it from again my brother's 13 the way he's talking about fitness and his body and 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 just yeah things surrounding that it's just very like interesting because it's nothing that ever crossed the mind my mind as a 13 year old which okay i'm only one person but no one that i even noticed growing up in south london in secondary school with hundreds of other people my age and the things that are coming out of his mouth i'm like wow i, I don't know what is going on in the app you're like, um, yeah. or what you're seeing or what all your friends are seeing and this is what you're worrying about and the fact that you like you want to be ripped and you want to be massive and and this is like a normal conversation like it's interesting because again I, I i didn't know anyone who even thought about that at that age like you mm. you might have done a few push-ups here and there and mm. whatever but yeah it's just crazy to me and then obviously they're being pushed these unrealistic physiques every single day you know they're still kids they're still developing they're still growing through puberty and then obviously this is what they're comparing themselves to and then you can quickly see why it gets to the point where it's like i just need to i i just need to take something and and because i'm the one that its physique is not good because i've been continuously pushed with the top 0.1 percent of physiques for hours every single day for the past two years so yeah and um no it's just crazy because the damage they're doing to themselves is is one that's going to affect them for the rest of their life number one and then number two it's um i was going to say something else and then number two yeah a lot of them aren't even past the newbie gains phase it's like you have you know, you know that phase where you you start the gym and you just progress flies because you've never done anything before. You like you look at yeah. a barbell and you grow. Like they're yeah. not even past that phase yet, and they're already yeah. um, talking about getting more bigger yeah. and and uh, and it's just yeah, it's it's kind of frightening because even like now I'm scrolling on on a TikTok or Instagram and I'll be seeing like young guys talking about yeah I'm I'm taking steroids. I'm 16 years old and I'm like fucking hell. Yeah. And that's the and that's the thing because it's so normalized. Like I can imagine me and you were similar ages, right? Imagine like back in our uh, back in like what 10, yeah, like 10, 12, 14 years ago, we will be saying, Yeah, bro, I've gone to the gym. It one, it was rare for someone yeah. who was around 16 to be no like 14, sorry, to be going to the gym. That's one. Very rare. Two, very rare. Like if you were a guy like I was skinny, but I because I had some broad shoulders. People thought I was hench. I was like, dude, I don't, I don't, I just go tennis. I don't do anything, right? So one, going to gym was already rare. Two, taking steroids. People will make fun of you. People will make fun of you. They'll be like, oh, you take steroids. You don't, you don't care anymore. How is somebody who has been to the gym for a few months at absolute most, not even a year, considering taking steroids? I do not understand. I do not know. I will not understand how somebody 
He was just been to the gym in under a year is considering taking steroids. It does not make any sort of sense to me whatsoever. And the only reason why they're doing it, as you were saying, is because the algorithm has pushed the zero, the top 0.0001% physiques out there, making them believe that that's the normal physique to get and so on and so forth. Because they look at someone like, you know, Sam Sudak, if you know who that is, and he's got an amazing physique, great physique, but he's on an enormous amount of steroids, right? And it's something where, because they see it, they get motivated, and so and so, they start to question, how would I be like if I took steroids? Hmm, maybe if I know someone who can help me, they can get me into this game, and so on and so forth. And before you know it, they have a cycle for like, you know, let's say six weeks. They think, oh, I didn't actually make that much gains. I actually, and it's like, ah, dude, you're 16. Come on. But that's the thing, because nowadays, Nowadays, remember back in our day, not like an old man, but back in our day, <laughs> trust me, <laughs> it's crazy. Back in our day, no one would really go to the gym like that unless you were privileged to go to the gym, right? Because you remember, you know, like it wasn't that accessible, like it was accessible, but it wasn't that accessible, right? And people weren't as motivated, you were just you were just either a sporty person or you weren't. And then two, the fact is that back then. Being big wasn't that desired like that. We just wanted to be sporty. But now it's turned to being big. And because to be big, you have to make those sacrifices. Now everyone wants to be big. Now everyone is trying to be big. I know guys who are 18 or just turned 18, you know that they're 30. No offense to them, but they've taken steroids. They've ruined, they, in my opinion, ruined a lot of their adult life by doing that just for an extra inch or two on your biceps. Why? It's not worth it, especially as a kid. So there is a funny concept. And now that it's gotten onto kids and it's normalized a lot, it's crazy. Yeah. That's that. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. But again, I do want to emphasize to the listener like, generally, I, I don't give a damn if someone does a date. Does- yeah take steroids if you know as long as they're old enough but yeah it's just the issue of it seeping down into like you know under 18s where it's just like this is madness and uh mm. and you know on that yeah or just and i think you phrased it really well if you've, you've been working out for a few months or not even longer than a year or not even longer than two years like i don't know what the hell you're thinking about even considering jumping on it like that's mm. just pathetic i'll put it there's no other way i can describe it it's yeah like, yeah have some damn patience man like there's anything yeah, worth doing honestly. takes time like you don't even you're not going to know that much about working out or about your body or going to the gym or what exercises work well or what don't or in just under two years like go through that process of trial and error first wait until you're old enough and uh and then whatever you want to do is your business but yeah man it's, it's crazy how much pressure these uh young people are feeling nowadays how old are you again by the way more or less 26 turning 27 in two months yeah 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 i I thought i thought so um yeah man yeah it's just crazy was there anything else you wanted to add before i go on to the next point uh no uh i've done uh talks on steroids uh similar to this actual topic in the sense of steroids with young kids on tiktok i've done it with a student who was doing something for radio I think two weeks ago, and that was a long conversation we had. That was really fun. So, but I think I've actually spoken about it quite enough recently. <laughs> <laughs> so, so uh, yeah, now I'm all right. Nothing else really adds on to that. All right. Uh, so, next post do not dirty bulk. It's just not worth it. You feel worse, you feel lethargic, you breathe heavier, your day to day life becomes more challenging just because you want to build muscle in air quotes quicker take your time with it eat the right foods and learn to build mu- muscle rather than dirty bulk what made you want to tweet that you know what it's funny because me and you have both experienced dirty bulking yeah extent. man yeah. Uh, yeah and and do you, it's so funny to me so my timeline is i first went to the gym around 2015 for like i think two times a month maybe doing absolutely nothing for three months sometime in 2015 Went for like one or two weeks in first year uni during the end of 2016, uh, beginning of 16. But I actually started bodybuilding and being in the gym properly since December 16, right? In that time, and I don't know, oh God, I 
did so well. I built muscle from December 16 till August 17, but the idea of bulking got into me, right? It got into me and I wanted to get bigger faster. Bearing in mind, I had grown a good amount from in one year, not even one year, in like nine, 10 months, right? I decided to dirty bulk and dirty bulking, I got bigger from it. And the best thing that happened in the dirty bulk was that I benched 100 kg quicker. Fine. Fine. But in that time, my health got a lot worse. My back started to hurt more. I felt lethargic. I felt crap. I felt like I couldn't really do much. I was such a static creature. I just couldn't do anything of myself other than just go to the gym, right? And but the way I looked, it wasn't even worth it because, okay, I got a bit bigger. But I was just purely out of shape. I was out of shape as hell. Like, I, I look back at some photos, I was thinking, the jump from 2017 towards um, mid-2018, before I went on the mini car, was terrible. I couldn't believe it. I looked great in August 17, but I don't know what in my mind told me that I was not good enough and that I was not big enough. Because what makes it even worse was that after I cut down a bit in, in 2018, I looked, I felt to myself, I looked average. So guess what I did again, Leo? In December 2018, I decided to bulk again. Dirty bulk again. This time, even worse than before. Even worse. And I just felt like crap. I felt terrible. I felt absolutely terrible. I couldn't do anything. I couldn't... I'm never going to get into the nitty gritty of it, but I just couldn't do much with my with my life at all. And it was so embarrassing. And the reality is that it just pushed me back. It put me back. It put me back so much. Whereas if I just continued what I was doing from 2017 onwards, I felt like I could have been in a way better position. So my opinion, I really don't recommend Dirty Bulk because I just think it's not ideal. We are not pro bodybuilders who need to do this sort of stuff where they need to balloon up and then cut down in, in a in a shorter period. We're not them. We need to understand that we are normal people who are just going through the fitness, um, who are trying to achieve their fitness potential. But we don't need to do this whole dirty bulking and so on and so forth. I really advise people to learn how to build muscle, not bulk. Mm. And uh, just so we clarify, I think the meaning of dirty bulk to the listener, uh, my understanding mm. of it, I don't know if you have a different one, is where you just, for dirty bulk specifically, is where you just kind of just eat whatever and anything with like no sort of limit. And you just, yeah, and that's pretty much it, which yeah. I wouldn't say I personally did. I did more, I was still like, this was like. 20, no, you never, you never dirty bulk, you just bulked a bit, isn't it? Yeah. I, I, I bulked up. Yeah. But and I was I was eating a lot, but to be fair, I was moving around a lot. Like I was averaging like twenty five thousand steps a day. Um it was when oh, I was wow. working in Fulham and I was doing classes, training like six times a week. Um yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was a lot. And I, I had a lot of walking throughout the day back and forth. So like mm. but I was eating I was eating too much and I didn't really give a damn about the quality of my food either. Like it was just whatever, as long as it fit and I was eating, but I definitely got I just got fat. I would say, I would just yeah. say that at the prime of it, I just yeah. got fat. And looking yeah. back, I, I, like, I could say like the last 6kg, I didn't even need. Like it was just 6kg, yeah. like, and 6, six, six 7 kg <laughs> too heavy. Um, yeah. Because yeah, after I lost about 6 or 7kg, I was like, you know what, I could have just gone up to here because I actually look great now. Yeah. Um, but yeah. yeah, that's that's pretty, that's kind of, yeah, that, that was what happened with me. But yeah, Dirty Vulcan specifically, like what I did, I would already say like, nah, like, um, you, you want to be prioritizing quality foods, etc. That's for a different chat. But yeah, dirty bulk mm. specifically, like that never really made sense in my head. And I, I definitely, mm. like you said, I, I wouldn't recommend it. Um, mm. You know, if you're going to eat in a slight surplus, do it. It's, it's an easier place to build muscle, prioritize quality, mm. quality foods. Um, mm. Yeah, you know, and uh, and that's the way forward. But yeah, eating everything and anything. I, it, the thing is, there's a lot of research now that shows and we know this now is that that doesn't even speed up the muscle gain process eventually there comes a point where you're just gaining fat um yeah yeah so oh, uh God. with dirty bulking especially where you just 
you might speed it up for like i don't know the first couple of weeks but after yeah you're just you're just gaining fat after yeah there's no not going to be any benefit that comes from just eating anything and everything with no limits and this is the thing that's what i was thinking that's oh leo i've you know i've preached about dirty vulcan and, and how i just think in my in my humble opinion, it's just BS. Again, you've just told me that there are recent studies. I haven't even seen much of them. I've seen one or two studies, but I haven't even seen the very recent studies that have shown it. But it just proves to me that dirty bulking doesn't help you the way you think it does. Mm. And a lot of people don't understand it because they go on what I like to call a seafood diet. You see food, you eat it. Simple as that. You just, you just, you just, like, you can't even, I used to have two large Domino's pizzas every three days. That's BS. Why would I do that to myself? Two large Domino pizzas. You know how much calories that is? That's it. That is. And not only the calories, forget that, but, ah, every three days. Why? Can I bulk up, bro? I want to get big. That's nonsense. That's nonsense. It's nonsense. And I, I, oh my God. That's, I, it kills me because I think to myself, where did I get this misinformation from? You told me to dirty bulk. You told me. I don't remember if you told me. If it, if it was someone that was close to me or if I uh, saw something on Instagram back in the day, what told me, I don't know. But I always say to people, dirty bulking does a lot more harm than it does good. Just focus on building muscle, eat in a slight surplus, eat your, my, your foods that are nutritionally dense, high in micronutrients, Blah, 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 blah. Another day, another conversation, and just go on from there. That's that. Yeah, man. I think you uh, put it pretty well. I've got um, one more, but I feel like we kind of touched on this a lot to the point where I was almost not going to mention it, but we can speak about it briefly. Is uh, Forget what social media says. Forget it. The pure basics. Learn basic compound movements. Lift heavy and mm. progress weekly, monthly. Eat more protein. Eat unrefined carbs. Eat vegetables high in fiber and vitamins. Sleep well, mm. seven to eight hours on average. Please. What made you want to tweet that? I just feel like people really tend to overcomplicate what to do when it comes to fitness, especially those who begin. They Because they will tell me, Oh, but this person told me this, but this person told me that. And I just say, listen, you have you have your good foods, you have, you know, you get enough sleep, you have your proteins, you do many compound workouts because all these fancy workouts that you see on Instagram or TikTok, okay, they could help, but that's for when you actually understand what you're doing. Then can you can come, then can you come to a conclusion whether that is a sufficient workout or not. At the end of the day. Sleeping well, having protein, having enough protein. Oh, sorry. Sleeping well, having enough protein, having um enough enough vegetables. Vegetables, yeah. Fiber, vegetables. Fruit. Sleep. Uh, every everything. Sorry, sleep, protein, vegetables, compound exercises. That's it. That's it. And obviously everything else like I'm Frank Carl, yada yada yada. Cool. If you just do the stuff and go about your day, I swear to God, you will see progress. Not instantly, but you will see progress eventually. And then once you understand the game a bit more, you can then go on and think, hmm, maybe I'm going to add on an extra day or I'm going to take away a, uh, a day or I'm going to add on this and that isolation workout because I clearly lack in this region and so on and so forth. That's great. But for now... Stop overthinking and just do your compound movements. Get used to the mechanics of lifting weights in general whilst having your protein, whilst getting enough sleep and whilst having foods that are nutritionally dense and you will be fine. That's it. Stop comparing yourself to other people. Stop comparing yourself to this damn influencer who's got 15 years of gym experience. Just, just please stop and just yeah. go about your day. Yeah, it's uh, just about sticking to the basics that you need, really. Um, yeah, compound movements, um, lift he uh, progressively overload, lift heavy, closer, relatively close mm. to failure, more protein, unrefined mm. carbs, vegetables, fiber, sleep well. And those are your pillars, pretty much. Um, yeah. So I don't yeah. even feel like I have too much to add to that. But uh, was there anything else you wanted to say overall from the conversation that we've 
just had so far? Um, uh, touch on before you finish or say? Honestly, all I can say to people is when it comes to fitness, please don't overcomplicate it. Please understand the basics because you can never go wrong with the basics. Know what works for you. Know what works for your friends or what they can figure out themselves. And just go on about your day. Just do the right things, but know that not everything is going to be, how can I say, just know that you may get things wrong. And just because you got things wrong doesn't mean that it's over. You can't mess this up. You're in this for life. The second you start fitness, in my opinion, you're in it until you're not able-bodied anymore or until you're dead. Do you understand? So be easy to yourself, but push yourself. Try not to overwork yourself. Try not to overthink. Try to just master the basics. You master the basics, I promise you, you will be so much at ease. That's why I can do whatever the hell I want to. Why? Because I'm calm. I have no the basics are are embedded in me. Nothing can take the base, nothing can take the basics away from me. I know it all now. Not know it all, but goodness me, I know more than enough to get myself around when it comes to the basics. So because of that, I can then play and intertwine certain things here and there, and I'm set. So don't overthink, guys. Fitness is fitness can be hard, but I promise you it's not that hard. Just go about your day. Enjoy life. No, yeah. What, well, yeah, what you said about it just becoming a, a journey is uh, true. I even, because I tweeted about that literally this morning. Um, It was something like, because uh, I got a tweet here in front of me. It was like, whilst doing a gym induction in 2019, I'll never forget when I was asked once asked by a new gym member who was eager to start strength training, eating well and, and being all around healthier. They said they asked me, how long do you think it will take until I've decided I don't want to make any more progress and maintain what I have? And it took me aback because this question was the first time I realized you never really get to that point because once you start, it just forever becomes a journey of continuous self-improvement. And mm -hmm. um, and it's like you said, so yeah, when you start out, don't get disheartened if you get things wrong. Um, it, mm -hmm. It's literally part of the process. Like it's a trial and error sort of thing. Um, mm -hmm. It's like when you go into a shoe shop, maybe the first pair of trainers that you try on, that you like it might not be your size or you don't really like it that's okay you don't fail in picking shoes like you just pick a different pair uh it's kind of like your fitness journey it's like trial and error and uh, sometimes that you know trial and error phase can last for a long time um mm -hmm. it might be very prevalent within the first few months you might still be figuring out after a year or two even though it might be a lot less and by that point you know a lot more about yourself like you're still always figuring things out um but yeah. anyway man um yeah, that was a good chat. Was there anything else you wanted to say as well? Because like it's almost been an hour and I want to be respectful of your time too. And this hour has flown by. I didn't even realize an hour has gone by. So yeah. Ne I mean, nearly. I'm I'm yeah. I'm 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 sure. I don't have anything else to add. You know I me, mean? I'm easy. Anytime you want to chat, anytime you want to uh any topic you want to talk about, I'm easy because you know, we 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 we've got a lot to talk about. We have a lot in common anyway. So in regards to that, I'm easy with that. So I'm chill. Okay, we we can we can say one more thing because someone did message me and they were like oh talk to brendan about this i was like you know what? we can do that as well actually and um mm. he was saying the positives he wanted us to talk about the positives of joining a gym and training besides getting fit for mm. example accountability social interaction community and many more because he thinks that many mm. people benefit from the gym more than they think um mm. And uh, and I feel like it's true. I feel like he nailed mm -hmm. it. Sure. He, he nailed it. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a great place for community. And you know what? On that, actually, say what you might want to say to that, and then I'll bring it up. Yeah, I mean, I think the gym in general. I've always thought to myself, what would I be like if I wasn't in the gym? And I just feel like my mental health would just plummet so much. Uh, the gym's community. The gym is a place where people go to be the best versions of themselves. People like to move. People like to feel better about themselves, feel stronger, feel happier, feel healthier. And I really recommend people try the gym. But the thing is, is that I come from a privileged background where the gym that I went to was inside a school, right next door to my house, hidden away from the general public, right? So I understand that people are a bit nervous and going towards the gym. And I always say, if that's the case, try to go with a friend. If not, join the gym, join some classes just so you understand the movements and so on and so forth and you'll just see how much better you feel about yourself in general because the gym the wonders it can do for your mental health and just for your general well-being 
other than getting fitter, is so underrated. I think people really just think the gym is about going there to look good and to look sexy and that's it. But the reality is a lot more than that. So don't undermine what the gym could do for your general well-being and really understand that the well-being that you attain from going to the gym will change your life forever. Mm. And I feel like a really good message to anyone potentially listening. So if you're listening and you are like quite anxious about going to the gym, one thing I will say is I feel like, and I'd love to hear your opinion on this as well, Brendan, is um, mm. I feel like the gym community and the environment once you're in there is actually one of the most welcoming places. Like a lot of people think it's very intimidating. Uh, it's not, it's got full of like, it's full of gym bros who are just, I don't know, very egotistical, judgmental, they're really loud, that, judgmental yeah. whereas I feel like in reality, it's actually the complete opposite. Now you might see mm -hmm. incidents and videos online where, you know, some sort of drama is happening at the gym, but just like the top 1% or 0.1% of physiques get pushed on social media, the top 0.1% of gym related content, if that's what you want to watch or if that's what ends up on your timeline is also going to end up on your timeline because that's what that's what apps and algorithms do to keep you on the app more, you on it, yeah. to make you want yeah. to watch more controversial things so yeah. yeah that's it's the same case in regard to gym environment so don't let that fool you because you will realize that the gym environment and the gym community is one of the welcoming places out there i haven't personally seen I, I could potentially say this for maybe my Brazilian jiu-jitsu do dojo, but like a, a more welcoming environment where everyone's just very supportive. You know, they want you to get to your goals. They're, they're there to to support you mm. and um, and they want to see you succeed. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly, I feel the exact same way about the gym. I think, you know, maybe, I mean, especially nowadays, it's, def it's, more, it's a lot more clear. But I feel like maybe back in 2017, 16 days, I used to actually think the gym was a awful place to go to in terms of if you were at that stage or near to that stage already. Because I used to think people would be judgmental, people would be awful to you, people would be side eyeing you, people would just want you to go away. Especially if you were someone who was a bit fat as well or very fat, because that's what I was made to believe. But then you quickly find out that that's not the reality at all. That the gym is very welcoming and the gym is very open. People want to help you. Whilst they're there for themselves, people want to help you achieve your goals. So I really think people need to understand that the gym is very opening, is very welcoming. And I like to say this, that nobody actually cares as well. And I say this in the sense where, because a lot of people think that when they go to the gym, let's say they're a very obese individual, right? That the whole world's going to be looking at them. I promise you, nobody actually cares. Nobody cares. Yeah, see, you know, I see an obese person in the gym. Good, you're in the gym. You're trying to help yourself. You're trying to better yourself. Great. I'm not like, oh, damn, wow, you're in the gym. Oh, wow, but you're so this, you're so that. You're... Come on, man. Let's be real. So people need to understand, to get out of that mentality. And even the and the videos you see online, remember, they are online videos that have pushed up. It's being pushed for your algorithm so you continue to watch it and watch it and then you don't and then you think the world is like that. Uh, 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 uh. The world is not like that. Trust me on that. So, yeah, the gym is very open and very welcoming and going to the gym in most scenarios will change your life for the better. Mm, no, exactly. And I feel like that's a good note to, to leave it on. Did you want to, did you want to say anything else about anything? before nope. i went on this conversation but yeah because this was a this was a fun chat bro um very fun yeah always. i think we got almost to about an hour uh, wh wh where can people find you if they want yeah so your stuff? yeah sure so literally first name surname is always basically it so brendan Corbino, so brendan spelled b-r-e-n-d-a-n and then Corbino is spelled c-o-b-b-i-n-a that is my instagram so brendan Corbino is my instagram my Twitter is different. It's actually I am Kobino. And uh, my TikTok is back to Brennan Kobino. And yeah, email if you want to email me, first name, surname at gmail.com. And yeah. I'll hyperlink that else, in the show notes of this podcast episode. So if you want to um if you do want to check that out and yeah, just follow him on Twitter or Instagram or TikTok, then I'll 
just check out the show notes of this podcast episode and I'll link it there. And, you know, on that note, if you're listening from Brendan's side and uh, you want to check out, I'm probably more active. Easy. I go in between Instagram and Twitter. In between, yeah. Um, sort of like right now, I haven't been on Twitter that much. Um, I've been more so on Instagram, or actually more on YouTube because YouTube has just been, a, I feel like a really yes, good right yeah. at the moment. Um, but you can only be on YouTube so much because uh, it doesn't have as many features. But um, yeah. At Leo Alves PT, Alves is spelled A-L-V-E-S, not with a Z. Um, that's Spanish spelling, but yeah, Leo Alves PT, which I'll also leave the link for in the show notes of this podcast episode. But um, okay. otherwise, Brendan, thank you so much for coming on, bro. We'll, we'll do another Thanks, episode around. again someday. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah, it's always it's always the good to uh, catch up. Yes, sir. You take care of yourself, Leo, all right? Thank you for having me. Okay, bro.